We are the Institute for Intuitive Intelligence, revolutionizing intuition by training spiritually fierce women globally as qualified intuitive guides. Subscribe for the leading research and teachings on the conversation of intuition development. Hello, dear beloveds. Well, don't get too excited, but it looks like this might be becoming a regular thing where the beloved Kim Newing and I are hanging out on Facebook and having these delicious conversations. I mean, we haven't had this one yet, but I'm pretty confident it's going to be <laughs> just as gorgeous as the last one. And I do, you know, we talked ages ago about doing a podcast. I think that is something we mm. could definitely have in our future. We do like chatting to each other. We do like chatting. We do. We get into the vibe and we forget, well, I forget that we're actually streaming live to the world. I'm like, no, we're just yeah. talking about cool shit. And then I forget to look at comments and all the rest of it. Yeah. But we come back. <laughs> I noticed you did that last time as well. So thank you. But Kim is the Institute Ambassador, and so she does have a special privileged role to, to really speak as a woman who I deeply admire. And that's obviously why we invited her to take up that role. Um, and someone who is quite happy to speak about the work of the Institute, which of course makes a really good ambassador. <laughs> but I, you know, I would love to know, it's always really interesting when we think about entering into a program especially a big commitment like the third level, big price point, big year, you know, it's a lot of time, mm. it's a lot of effort. We, we often want to know what's going to change for me. Like what's actually going to be mm. the benefit of doing this? Cause it can be very hard to know that before you start. And just before we went live, we sort of touched on this. So I'm going to begin with this question, my darling, mm. what changed for you in your specifically after or during the third level? Oh, wow. Um, everything. Um, okay. What changed for me specifically? I'll go back one step. One step was, can I immerse myself in a year long training whilst being a mother of three children, whilst also having a business? And, you know, what is the time commitment and will I be able to meet everything that's required of me? And I think the truth comes with when we make something a priority, when we decide that it's important enough, you find the time, right? You make it work, you integrate it in as your way of being. And I found that was one of the big things that really altered throughout the third level was understanding that this um, spirituality is not a separation. It's not, I just do my spirituality over here in the morning, um, as I'm preparing for my day, rather learning that it is, it is who I am. It is my way of being. And I infuse all of this into everything I do. And so the time pressure came when I lived in that duality of I'm, I can only do this in this rather than seeing yeah. it's, it's, it's all of this in everything. And that significantly changed the way that I did business also. And, you know, coming from the place of, and I've talked about this a lot, so I may be repeating myself, but feeling like I was this finite, small human being that was Kim Newing, you know, I would see clients one-to-one. -one. I'd been a life coach uh, for many, many years and mostly in person. And I took a lot of my work online uh, when I started the third level. And coming from this finite place of having to do it all, you know, and I wore that almost like a badge of honor, like I'm a mother and I work and it, there's so much to do. And I, you know, and shifting that perspective through the third level of actually when I open myself to become a divine channel and recognize that it's not about me, mm -hmm. right? And, and that beautiful line from A Course in Miracles that I remember you taught us, you know, I of my own self can do nothing. And when we buy into that, we, we struggle with our own sense of self instead of handing it over or opening up and becoming that vessel. And then all of a sudden we have the energy and the availability and the time to do the things that need to be done in order to align with our service. And I really saw that and continue to see it. Like I have people all the time saying, how come you don't get sick? How do you fit all this in? Like, and it's like, Fuck, because I practice what I preach. It's not perfect to this times I, I'm like, it's, you know, not enough time or not enough energy. But for most part, it's opening to that great channel and allowing it to work through you. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I really appreciate you saying that because I think that, yeah, if you look at it from, as you say, that muggle perspective, of course, there's no more time. Of course, there's no more time to add in yet another commitment. And I think for a lot of us, that is really scary to to sit in the chaos of our already overwhelming lives okay. and and still feel that yearning, but knowing I don't know what to do with that yearning. I don't know how to schedule or prioritize my spirituality. And you've absolutely hit the nail on the head is that this is the way that you overcome that separation mentality where you stop thinking spirituality over here, life over here. Yeah. And it's sort of only through repetition, right? You have to do yeah. it again and again. And you also have to be reminded to do it again. Yeah. Oh, did I pause? Yeah, we've got a little bit of a delay, but uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can lip read. Right now, so my apologies yeah. <laughs> for that. Yeah. So I think that is a really beautiful point for anyone who's considering the program is that no, it's not necessarily an easy thing to add in more, but is it easy to live in a constant state of stress and chaos and overwhelm? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I was having this conversation actually this morning with my husband, he'd listened to something, some motivational conversation and so we were just kind of chatting it out as you do, you know, and we were focusing on or looking at the construct of everything's hard, you know, life is hard, you, you know, that's a belief. But if we look at it like, you know, opening to your deeper self is it requires discipline. It's not easy. You have to show up every fucking day, but it's equally as hard to sit in the mire of your shit and stay small and not change you know so it's like choose your heart which one do you want to feed yeah. which one are you going to privilege right and just decide yeah it's, it's not going to be a walk in the park but i want to feed the one that's going to expand me into great bliss into great freedom into great reward versus the one that i know what that path gives me right i know what traveling down that path leads to yeah. So, yeah, and I think that's the beauty of the third level is, um, you know, the consistent applied practice and the tools that you get for a long period of time in a sacred container with extraordinary women on the same path so that you can really become that, you know, really own that. I teach that small, the intro part, the, the initiate program, which is just that beginning, that initiation into the deepening of what the third level really offers as a way of being so yeah. and i'd love for you to tell us a little bit about it because when we last spoke you hadn't quite started but now mm. i'm guessing week three this week is that right this week or? is week three good memory yeah, yeah. And what are you what are you sharing this week <laughs> this week we're doing the science of intuition which is delicious and juicy yeah and you know, the women in my course are just, we, we had our first Q&A conversation last week and it was so incredible. The beginning of each of the journeys or each of the weeks, I lead us through a guided visualization where we enter the shala or the sacred temple together and assist, you know, building that sisterhood. And there's 15 incredible women in the program. And they get to visualize holding one another's hands. They don't know each other. They're from all places all across the world. Yeah. And in the Q&A, some of them shared who they sat next to and whose hand they were holding. And of course, we know they're like, yeah. well, it, the same person said, oh my God, I was sitting next to you too <laughs> and holding your hand too. And I felt like we were really there. Yeah. And, and you know, it's the magic of there's no separation. There's no time and space when loved ones pass on and we can no longer hug them and hold them. Or can we? Or yeah. can we in just a different experience, right? It's, um, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. In, it, I mean, that's the thing, the understanding our quantum nature, mm. which is our truth, which is our scientific truth, is the way I think to start to break down that resistance to the separation thinking that I'm small and finite and I can't do this yeah. all. And yet to train yourself to think like the universe, to train yourself to think quantum, takes those embodied experiences like you just described um you know where it's like oh fuck it wasn't just me hallucinating this it was actually there were other women having the same experience um and it's it's brilliant it's it's breaking down the resistance to our truth and it 
you have to live it. You have to apply it. You have to get in it. What's your favourite... I know there's so much in that module, but what's your favourite piece of the science that tells us the truth about our intuition? Oh, gosh. What's my favourite piece? I love sharing the understanding of both the anatomical and the energetics of the heart and that the, the field and how as we expand that field, you know, the, the, the veil becomes so thin and we feel that interconnectedness into that non-local field of, of intuition where we can really pull through or receive or become that conduit for information to come through. So I love going into the science of understanding both on a physical, tangible level, if we want to talk about it on that level, and both from an energetic level, how we can dance and marry those two together and become that. Um, it feels like it molds, you know, the two worlds, which of course the two worlds are one, but these conversations can get really, you know, um, wrapped up. I think that's the part that I'm really excited to, to share this week. Um, and then the practice, of course, this week is the heart congruence and learning how to attune our frequency and recognizing that we are in charge of the frequency we set. And letting that be our daily commitment at the very least beginning our day of setting that blueprint, setting that frequency, that um, energetic standpoint for that expandedness yeah. and beginning each day from that place and noticing the miracles that that brings in, how that transforms behaviours and thoughts and relationships and experiences just by becoming more of our true nature and expanding into that field. That just juices me. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that so much. Just learn that it's not just your metaphysical heart, but your anatomical heart that's right. playing in that. That is, that's once again, it's like, this is undeniable. This is just yeah. the, the biology. There's nothing spiritual about that. And yet it is part of our superpower. And um, I don't know if you can hear the ocean. It seems to get really loud. I'm just going to show you my view uh, right now. Oh. So beautiful. It keeps getting louder and louder. And I'm like, can she still hear me? <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, going back to that example of the women sitting in circle virtually, like they're online, but then feeling the intimacy as though they were in the yeah. same time, knowing that they are all across the world and that that is absolutely it. They're at, at the level yeah. of the local, there is no time and space to travel. And if we, if we just sit with these truths and blow our own minds a little bit wider yeah. every day, it is that constant coming back to the same material. I think we can be very, as spiritual seekers, like we want to jump from one thing to the next. But what if I just sat with that truth every day mm. and let it change me? And I think that's what you offer and what's in that initiate program, as you say, the seeds of what you then do for a year, because then you've got to break yeah. all the addictions. <laughs> right right yeah yeah it's one thing to have that first activation it's another to live that to the point where you rebuild reprogram till it becomes a way of being which takes that commitment and i think that's probably why the program's a year long right it takes that period to really solidify that that sense of self yeah yeah and i i think that's it's so true we could give you the content in three months but you wouldn't be the vessel that is you wouldn't be ready to carry the responsibility of that truth because the vessel as perfect as it is needs an upgrade like we need to be reminded that we are not human alone and mm. yeah we nothing in the world unless you're looking at a view like this and that's very intentional for me and I know you've chosen to live in a place that I think does the same thing where every day the beauty reminds you of your truth yeah yeah, and, and I, otherwise life is not reminding us. It's kind of shutting us down, in fact. So these opportunities are, are priceless. So I'll go back to that question and again, because I know I don't have too much more of your time. Yeah. What's the biggest change in your business since doing the third level? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, gonna... apart from the, so the financial has been unbelievable um, to me, you know, what I consider. Um, unbelievable um, so um, which is very exciting um, 
my ownership of myself as a leader has changed completely. And why that's occurred is because I've used the tools every single day, every single day, and really applying the truth that I must meet myself in all of my ness, all of my humanness, all of my fear, whatever, and transmute that, be with that, you know, understand it, let it, let it have its space because that's true for me in that moment, but it is not truth but it feels true in that moment. So honoring and acknowledging that in the moment and then choosing again, those two paths to expand myself beyond that. Yeah. And in that has really enabled me to, to sit into my own seat of myself, to really claim my path as a leader. But the difference came and it wasn't immediate, right? This has grown. You've witnessed me over time, right? For so long, I'm like, oh, can I do this? Who am I to do this work? People meet me and they see me as a teacher and they're like, you've always done this, right? This is natural. It's so effortless. How come? Just led a nonlinear movement class. No, I used to shit my pants, right? Before I taught any of this, even yeah. when I started teaching it, because I still had that part of myself that's like, who am I to do this? And then again, with continuing the practices that I've learned, that you've taught me, that I've learned throughout the third level, it's the transcendence of that. It's meeting the self in that and then moving beyond it to recognize it's not about me. And when I'm, uh, I'm allowed or allow myself to put the ego or personality aside and go, okay, I can understand that. And I'm going to lean in anyway, because it's part of a greater service. Yeah. And in that I become a divine channel and I stop buying into the, the bullshit and the stories and the smallness. And I go, do you know what? My job is just to show up. Right, it's to show up and say, use me as a divine channel for love. Use me as a divine channel for good. And, you know, there's so much beauty and freedom and privilege in that. Yeah, I love that so much. It's like the program, we should call it the program to help you get over yourself. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. that's really like, and get on with it. And mm. as you say, you know, to be what other people are already seeing in you. But without any of that exhausting doubt and that, yes, yeah. it might rise, as you say, but you're not going to stop just because it rises. You know how to right. work. And to, yeah, just get on with the job that you were put here to do. Yeah. And, and I just love that. Thank you so much. I feel like I just, oh, it was yeah. so, it's so good. It's so juicy. And, you know, I'm, I really love that you've had tangible benefits as well because, to me, that's really important that women in this work stop seeing themselves in a kind of poverty mindset. Mm. I know you're already earning money, you're already successful, but for a lot of women in this work, they don't give themselves permission for that financial abundance. But, you know, it's just another way to increase your power to serve, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And to then make choices to live in a way that suits your soul's needs. So the beautiful... Um, I'm going to call it retreat centre because I'm assuming one day yeah. it's centre. <laughs> yeah, it's part of the plan. Yeah, I mean, you can't really see the backdrop now, but it is it's, oh, it's pretty, it's magic pretty, where we live. Yeah. And that, you know, that is part of the privilege, but also that commitment through your discipline to create a life that would then match what you need yeah. on a daily basis for your soul to feel good, right? Right. Yeah, yeah and again, you know, blasting through the belief that, it's, you know, once you get on this path, then it's all going to be ease and grace, right? And your intuition just lets everything unfold just perfectly and easily. It's like, fuck no, like you get impressed up against a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's when it's required of you, right? Am I going to lean in and open to this discomfort, to this, which I didn't plan or expect? Or am I going to go, oh, no, maybe, maybe I should turn away from that. Or oh, that's, you know, the way uncomfortable is going to stay here. Uh, but of course, anything I've learned around this is that it, all of the, the magic are, is available to me on the other side of that discomfort, on the other side of moving from my comfort zone. And I'm so glad that I continue to do it. And it's scary. And I have tools to, to manage that. You do. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, my darling sister. I am, um, yeah, I really do think we, we need a podcast because I think we could just. I do too. Great, yeah. On the idea. <laughs> because we both got so much free time yeah 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 that's right 
take the time. Um, it is a privilege as always to have your company. And I, yeah, I'm really, yeah, just so grateful for offering these insights because it, it is, it's a big deal to commit to a year long program. And I think this really helps um, to provide that personal experience, that lived experience, that insight. So yeah. Full of gratitude you for you and so much love to all of you who joined us. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone there? Yeah, no, ask, no, answer question. But yes, I'm going to stop that live stream now. Thank you to everyone and I'll speak to you all or we'll see you all very soon. Bye.